This journey of 50 plus years started in 1957 when Jackie, a single mother of her beloved Katie, was confronted with a very heart-wrenching and excruciating decision to make, trying to keep Katie or to give her up for adoption. Amid the grief, sorrow, shame, and pain, Jackie very reluctantly decided to give Katie up for adoption as she didn't feel she was able to give Katie as good a life nor opportunities which she wanted for Katie. They both went their separate ways for 50 years. Jackie then suffered in silence for those 50 long years. When Jackie reached age 70, she decided it was time to tie up some loose ends. Foremost in her mind was the search for Katie. With problems due to secrecy laws, she searched for and finally found Katie in 2007. She waited until immediately after Mother's Day to attempt to contact her as, as Jackie did not want to interfere with Mother's Day between Katie and her adoptive mother, Barbara. This book tells the heartwarming story of the first 13 days of attempting a reunion after 50 years of separation. The 50 long years of grief, pain, shame, and suffering turned to joy with some apprehension as to the outcome of the attempted reunion. The journey of the reunion is still going on. A Brooklyn Park woman and her grown daughter are the authors of a new book that deals with their very personal story. As Alexandra Renzel reports, it's a story about a secret that was kept for 50 years and what happened once the secret was out. <laughs> to see the close bond between Jackie Maher and Katie Dacos. And this one, probably about two. You would never guess this oh, mother-daughter duo was, was separated for 50 years. This was within a month, the first month after she was born. Old photos from the 1950s help tell their story. I'm this one. Unmarried and pregnant at the age of 20, Jackie gave up her baby daughter Katie for adoption in 1957. I knew that as a single mother of the 50s, I could not. I could not raise a child and give her what she deserved. During her pregnancy, Jackie moved away so family and friends would not find out. Only her mother knew. It was something that was kept hidden. Uh, the shame went very, very deep. I was raised a Catholic. It's a secret that Jackie kept for 50 years, even as she went on to marry and have a family of five kids. Yes, I did think about her from time to time, and I think even when I signed the papers and they said you'll never be able to see her again, I thought in the back of my mind, oh yeah, someday, Someday I will. And this is First Communion. Meantime, Katie grew up in a loving home in the metro area and knew all along that she was adopted. Well, I was indoctrinated the same way. This is your family now. Your birth mother had you, placed you for adoption to give you a better life. She went her way, you go your way. Though Katie was curious about her heritage, she never searched for her birth mom but she did have a reoccurring dream about her. Very short dream, I walk up to this door and I knock on the door and she opens it in her royal blue evening gown. <laughs> it wasn't until 2007 when at the age of 70, Jackie decided to search for her daughter. I thought she might just want to know uh, what her nationality was, who she looked like, did she have any hereditary diseases? Jackie discovered her daughter lived in Minneapolis. She wrote her a letter exactly 50 years to the day that Katie was given up for adoption. So many coincidences, just so many things just fell into place. The letter came and so I'm reading the letter and I'm like, oh my gosh. And I knew immediately I was gonna respond. Over the next 13 days, mother and daughter emailed back and forth. Their letters and reunion are now the subject of a book they wrote together titled 50 Years in 13 Days. I hope that, that it eliminates some of the fear that other people have about ma making the same move, 
taking the risk. I just think it can be such a rewarding experience. After 50 years, <laughs> this mother and daughter are together once again and building a relationship that took years in the making. People say, why did you wait so long? But this was the right time. Things worked out the way they should have. In Brooklyn Park, Alexandra Renslow, 12 News. And Jackie and Katie's book, 50 Years in 13 Days, will be available on Amazon.com after May 1st. Quite a story. And I guess uh, reuniting after 50 years takes some adjusting. It can be difficult, but they both say it's worth it. Can all the, t you know, the difficult things are, are worth it. Can you imagine trying to catch up on all that time? And it's right in the Minneapolis there area there. all this time. Right That's there. pretty neat. 15 days. We want to tell you about this. It's a mother-daughter reunion that will warm your heart. The authors of this book join us live in our studio to talk about it all. In 13 days, it's a timely read this Mother's Day. This morning, the mother-daughter authors join us live to talk about their new book. 50 Years in 13 Days details a mother's mission to find the daughter that she gave up for adoption and the heartfelt email and letter and email and email and email that put them <laughs> back together into this emotional reunion. Joining me are Jackie Maher and Katie DeCoss, and it's really wonderful to have both of you here. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing your story. Mm -hmm. You were just saying the story is hot off the press, the ink is still wet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's just a, it's a really, um, a really touching story. Well, we'll start with you, Jackie. We'll, we'll start back 50 years ago or mm -hmm. so. You were 20 years old, and you had to make just a amazing, tumultuous decision mm -hmm. that was obviously a turning point. Right, exactly. It was the best thing I could do for my daughter. And uh, back in those days, it was very quiet, very hushed. And once the papers were signed, they were sealed. I was never going to see her again. That's what they told me. And uh, so she went her way, and I went mine, and uh, lived the lives we were meant to live. And then one day I turned 70, and there were loose ends. I always knew, I think, that someday, someday I was going to find her. And uh, that was one of the loose ends I felt I had to tie up now. Because it was secretive. Only your mm -hmm. husband, who of course you met later, knew yes. that you had actually born a child when you were mm -hmm. in your 20s. You were single. The, the father of the child wasn't one that you wanted to marry. Mm -hmm. You were Catholic. And these were just huge decisions that exactly. you had to make. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. So uh -huh. you decided to write a letter. How long yes. did it take you to write this letter? Well, I don't know that it took that long. Um, I was advised to write a letter. Oftentimes these things come about with a phone call, which I think must be very startling to the receiver. But my searcher said, write a letter, uh, tell her enough to pique her interest, <laughs> not too much. Wow. <laughs> but you were able to find her as well. That was one thing that yes, obviously. Yes, by that time I had found her, I sent her a letter. And um, I, then I sat back and just get my fingers crossed, and it took all of four hours. And we keep <laughs> saying her, but you yeah. are her. Katie, yes. you, yep. you um, uh, got that letter, and mm -hmm. you didn't waste any time at all. Nope. How nope. much time? Um, she had an uh, email in her inbox in about four hours. Wow. But she was already gone to bed, so she didn't get it till the next morning. <laughs> well, a lot of people would say, you know, wasn't there a lot of anger? Wasn't there a lot of pent-up, you know, you know, issues and emotions for you? I, um, what do you I think? I think a big thing that happened just before I got the letter was I'd turned 50. And I'd been looking forward to turning 50, and it was very empowering. And so I thought I was in the best place in my life, the best place I'd ever been in my whole life. I was enjoying life, and I thought, well, here we go again. <laughs> and, your, and your adoptive parents were wonderful people, and you ended up having mm -hmm. a big family of adopted children that you grew up with your entire life. Mm -hmm. But this is just yep. something that actually, you know, was able to uh, finalize your your uh, your decision to, to, to contact her right away. Yes, it, as soon as I read the letter, I knew I was going to contact her. This is you growing up. So cute. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> so in the next 13 days... Lots and lots of emails. Back and forth, several a day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. It must have been so exciting to look in the inbox. Oh, another one from Katie, another <laughs> no. one from Jackie, another one yeah. from Katie. And, <laughs> and she was teaching at the time, so she'd have to sneak them in between classes. Yeah, between <laughs> classes. And, and immediately, because I'd show the messages to friends of mine, especially this one woman at, that I worked with, and she'd come running into my office, goosebumps, goosebumps. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, Sally. <laughs> so this, this reunion happened in 2007. Yes, and it's now 2009, yes. Mother's uh -huh. Day weekend. Uh -huh. What is what has happened in the last two years for the two of you? 
Um, I feel as though I have been hugely validated because as an adoptee, um, just you kind of follow a path in your life without having the messages of, oh, your mother used to play the piano or your grandma used to write like that and Jackie and our writing style is so similar, people have mentioned. Um, I just feel like I'm the person I'm meant to be and now I know yeah. why. And you, of course, had five other children. Yes. Uh -huh. And so then you were able to meet this whole family, yeah. right? And that must yeah. have been amazing for both of you. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I've met her family, and, and uh, yes, it's, it's uh, been very nice, very oh. nice to be able to get together. And it's a great Mother's mm -hmm. Day story. Oh, it's, it's uh, been awesome. It, it really yeah. is. It's, it's atypical, but it's absolutely mm -hmm. fabulous in that way. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us and sharing your story and writing it, because we want to let people know how they can get it and meet you today, or yes. meet you in the next uh -huh. week or so. So mm -hmm. I have all mm -hmm. that information, okay? Okay, okay Jackie, great. Yes, yeah. Jackie and Katie will see interested in philosophy, by the way, my own and that of some Mom. major thinkers. Mom. What else can I say? I would like to know more about your life if you see fit to have contact. I'm concerned that I can perhaps answer any health issues you may have or questions about ancestry. There is a lot of Irish here. Any other questions you might have, I would be glad to fill in the blanks. Perhaps we could meet over a cup of coffee or... It has been my prayer all these years that you have had a good and loving home. It is the wish of all birth mothers, I believe, when we find that we cannot keep our child. Would you let me know soon whether you wish contact or not? I thank you for that. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Take care. Yes, I think the answer. And this is written May 12, 2007. Exactly 50 years after the adoption. I think was your sign. To the day. Okay, so that's when I came home from work and waited about half an hour before I even got around to the mail and read that. So by 9 o'clock, this is what I, how I responded. <coughs> Dear Jackie, wow, and I thought it was all downhill now that my 50th birthday celebration is officially over. As is typical for me, I am in a fugue state between information and comprehension. It generally takes 12 to 18 hours for big news to sink in. However, I know you have been thinking of this for a lot longer than I have, so I won't keep you hanging. In fact, if you are like me, you want an answer now. I've never seriously considered searching for you, but I've always been open to the prospect of a meeting should you initiate it. To what degree, I can't say at this time, however, I will take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about myself. I am currently the clinical training coordinator and an instructor in the veterinary technology program at a local university. Briefly, my background in veterinary medicine is degree from MIM, followed by 16 years as a veterinary technician in a small animal clinic. I began my teaching career in September of 2001, the 11th to be exact. Auspicious start. Yeah. <laughs> I live with my husband, dog, and cat and have two grown stepchildren with children of their own. My stepdaughter was adopted by my husband and his first wife, so we share that special connection. My husband, being 18 years older than I am, was retired from his career as a social worker. For various reasons, I chose not to have children of my own, so alas, no long lost grandchildren. My life story will have to keep for another day, but suffice it to say that I had every advantage available in the way of education and opportunity. I have one older brother and one younger sister who were also adopted. Both of my parents are very creative, artistic people, and that has lent itself to a very interesting life. We seem to share many common interests. I, too, cannot pass a book store without going in. Mysteries are my favorite these days, so it didn't take long to recall a phone call my husband received the other day from a Tim Maher. A half-brother, perhaps? <laughs> I have stacks of books waiting to be read. I also enjoy crafts, crocheting and silk flower arranging in my current interests. I too enjoy writing and have been told by the Manassee Victor. I've had a very career starting out with a degree of social work. I'm currently attending St. Mary's and looking for a master's degree in education. I like to travel and my most recent vacation was a week in an ocean front house with eight other women in Folly Beach, South Carolina. This was to celebrate 50th birthdays for three of us. Anyway, that's me in a nutshell. I look forward to corresponding by email for now and I'm sure that at some point we will meet face to face. I've attached a picture for you. It is almost two years old, but still a good likeness. The dog on the left is my beloved Winston. I look forward to our journey.
maybe a local university and at this time I you know you weren't oh sure what when you I wrote it to her then yeah what <clears throat> you know. um so what was I thinking as far as how much I wanted to yeah what you wanted to share and if you really wanted to move forward with this because she was telling me a lot and asking you a lot mm -hmm. yeah I think my main thought was I need to protect myself. <laughs> I tend to jump into things really fast, obviously. <laughs> um, this was something that I thought, boy, if we're going to be communicating through emails, I need to take it kind of slow, uh -huh. not tell too much. Um, but it wasn't very long. It was a matter of about two days. And yeah. uh, spill on everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I have people have made that comment before that that very first letter sounds much more Real stilted yeah. than anything that came out. Yeah. I have to say, I met yeah. Katie, I don't yeah. know, in the early 80s when yeah. she was younger and had long curly hair. And I was raising Brittany Spaniels and I went into the vet and she was just wonderful in that clinic you know I went to see you not anybody else but, yeah. you know. so and then at a later time I had met Jackie so I knew them both separate and didn't know they were hooked together oh, that, <laughs> that night, I know yeah. you didn't even recognize me right away that night well, that, was like just, yeah, that was fun yeah that was fun because I recognized shocking. her right away yeah. go ahead Kitty I want to go way back to you okay um, were you adopted out right away, or were you kind of left hanging around the hospital, or what? Um, it was five weeks. You want to answer five that? Five weeks? Well, you, said, you said the, uh, the final paper. The final papers were five weeks? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It, I signed the papers, I think, probably roughly about, I surrendered roughly about uh, a month after she was born. Oh. Well, you didn't right away. No. Huh? Okay. No. Okay. But no. you didn't have, you, she wasn't in your... No, she wasn't in my care. No, yeah. no. no this was at the infant's home. Mm -hmm. The infant's home, and then, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they had a nursery there. Yeah. And then, so, the, over the years, I think, that that was, I think over the years, the things have changed, or maybe the location. I know so the books I've read, some places the mother uh, nurtures the child for 10 days before she, before she surrenders, or... Um, they're just different scenarios, and you know I don't know how you can do that. I think I've thrown myself under the bus, and, you know, if I had her for ten days and then mm -hmm. then had to you know, <coughs> This way, I only saw her twice, except for through the window in the hospital. But I didn't hold her; I held her on the way home to the infant's home, and that's the only time I held her. And then I saw her once more, and uh, then decided it was time to let to let her go. To let her go. Does that answer your question? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know, that was the Catholic Infants Home in St. Paul, a.k.a. Watermelon Hill, I guess. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can still oh, find that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of play. Yeah, yeah there's a play. There's oh, a play. really? Play too? And it was, what, nine something Carol? Nine, three, four Carol? Something like that, yeah. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't there anyone? No. No, it was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, run by the sisters. I think I don't know St. Joseph's sister. Mm -hmm. Jackie, yes. how, how that was, you were right, it was run by the St. Joseph sisters and and to save face, people went in there in an, an anonymous name. I also experienced yes. that. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. it was, that part of it was not a good experience, but right. evidently the powers that be thought it was going to be better for us and our child, but uh -huh. as time went on, we found out that was not good. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Katie, do you have other siblings? Yes, I have an older brother right there and a younger sister. So Mike's two years older and my sister's five years younger. And they're, oh, that's right. I read the article. They're both adopted. 
Similar experiences as far as finding uh, uh, their uh, their former parents. Or oh, okay. Um, Mike has. <coughs> well, Mike, you answer that because that's your. <laughs> um, I really have not instituted any type of search. Okay. The only thing I really did when I was like 25 was to uh, uh, get information from Catholic charities on uh, health. Which they had at that time. Right? That they would give up. Right. And I think I, maybe 15 or 20 years ago, I might have called up to see if there's any follow up information to my health or anything, but there hadn't been anything followed up to. So I haven't proceeded to have any of that. I myself have no desire to. Right. <coughs> Um, Lucy's not here, but she actually, she, we all three of us back in the 80s when they first said you could get non-identifying information, we all wrote for it when we were old enough. She knew at that point that her birth mother was dead, but she had a full birth sister who had also been placed for adoption five years before. So over the years, I just thought, hmm, well, that's interesting. I'm five years older than Lucy. Her birth sister's five years older than Lucy. Wouldn't it just be a kick in the head if I knew this person? Well, when she showed me her picture this last fall, I was like, it was one of my classmates from St. Margaret's Academy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it was, I know, goosebumps. Goosebumps. <laughs> um, and it was one of those things where when you know what you're looking at, it's very apparent, but if you don't, and anyone who saw that article on Saturday about siblings, you know, those kids at St. Louis Park, I think, mm -hmm. that kept yes. looking at each other funny, like... They knew. Yeah. They knew. Yep. So, um, so that was very... And small world. It's just a small world. Jackie and I have had experiences. Uh, Mom had done a painting that I submitted to the ABMA journal to be put on their cover. And it was printed on their cover in 98, I think. Oh. I was thinking 96. But right across their coffee table because uh, Jackie's the other been, <laughs> Yeah, is a veterinarian. I have another friend of mine from high school. Her parents lived just down the street from Jackie. And just these things that just, yeah, just happened. That six degrees of separation, there's something to it. Yeah. Was it hard telling the, your parents that raised you that you were um, going to have a reunion with your birth mother? Or how did that, was that tough? Or? Um, I was a little nervous because it had all hit so fast and I didn't know what the reaction would be. Um, but mom was very supportive, dad was very excited, so, um, and there have been, you know, things that we've had to sort out. You can't have an experience like this in your life that doesn't kind of discombobulate things like dad said one day to me. What is happening to this family? <laughs> I said, it's all good. <laughs> but um, yeah, there, it was, there was some anxiousness there, but you know, we're family, we love each other, and so we've gotten through it very well. Go ahead. Um, why did you decide to publish this, put it together as a book and publish? Um, as soon as we started exchanging emails, and I'm one of those people that I was sharing it with, her, I was practically stopping people on the street. Guess what? <laughs> but anyways, I'd exchange these emails because it took maybe three or four exchanges for me to see how similar our writing styles were. So then I was showing it to people at work, and they were very interested. People are fascinated by reading it. Just fascinated. They want to, you know, see it here at my students. This one of my students, Bobby. She remembers me talking about it in class. Um, so, and people immediately said, you should write a book. You should write a book. But it's a powerful story, and the fact that we were both able to be so open and honest and share, you know, the funny things, the sad things. And I think the other thing, too, is Jackie at 71 is not the only 71-year-old birth mother out there. And she's lived all these years of shame and secrecy. And I hope that our book empowers other birth mothers to step forward, to take that risk, because it was risk and opportunity is what that whole thing amounted to. Jackie took the risk to write the letter. 
I took the risk in responding, but it was an opportunity to see what happens. Um, and the difference in your life since being able to you know, talk about this, tell them what your friends all said. Wow. When you told them, <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, you were but concerned about I was just surprised that uh, everybody said, oh, that's great. Oh, how exciting. Oh, that's so exciting. And I thought, none of them said, well, shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> because that was all gone. Uh, and um, there were some family dynamics that didn't pan out the way it would have liked. Be, but I think that's. That's kind of normal. You add a whole new dimension to your family circle, and there's some people who want to just stand back and wait a little. Wait a minute. I didn't know this because I didn't tell them until uh, I'd started the search. So they didn't. They hadn't known it all these years, and so it was a little bit of a shock to them to find that out. But some of them have stepped up to the plate, and, and uh, most of my family is just excited about it. And, and in fact, they were getting a little bit overwhelming. They just couldn't seem to get enough of it. Yeah. <laughs> Except they aren't here now. Yeah, no, you're <laughs> here, but they aren't here. Yeah, well, Where well, are, are they? they? <laughs> Did we sneak in? No, Denver, <laughs> hey, dude! Happy anniversary. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's another former student of mine, and it happens to be his eighth wedding anniversary. Yeah. And he decided this was the place to spend it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Yes, he, you met Jackie, that's right. How's it yeah. going, Jackie? I'm doing good. Good, good. <laughs> so anyways, um, I don't know if our purpose with this book or with just what happens in the coming months or years is to simply assist other women and just letting go of that chain because it's something that can be We want it to make a difference crippling. in other people. Mm -hmm. And the, the way it has come about, I mean, it's just... I believe that there are certain things that we're meant to do in this life, and uh, this book was was one of them. And when, but it needed Katie and I to to do it, and uh, so we came together and we we wrote this book. And we're going to see where it goes, where it takes us, and where and how many other people are affected by it, and give you know give their own lives a second thought. Mm -hmm. Do you also see it as a help for adopted adults to? Oh, for sure. Oh, that yeah. Yeah, in, in the triad too. at all. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Because if you had asked me, oh, anytime up until I got that letter, yeah, meeting my birth mother was important or would make a different difference in my life, I would have said, no, no, I'm in a good place and I know who I am. And so I was as blown away as anything. And it isn't that I want you know, to move from one family to another. I have my family, I have my people. But to just, I think the way I describe it best is to be validated. That, you know, I've kind of traveled through my life. I've had parents that were creative and encouraging and encouraged me to try different things. Um, and then to meet Jackie and then discover, well, that's where the writing comes from. I mean, it came from environment, but there's a piece of me. There's no other way to describe our writing style being so similar. So it just kind of validates who I knew I already was. Now it's like I have that last piece that says, well, of course this is what you ended up with. <laughs> so it's been, and it's been an unbelievable journey. Unbelievable journey. Just a lot of personal growth and self-confidence. Although some people would say, you're funny confident before. <laughs> <laughs> so look out. <laughs> Any other questions or comments or anything? Katie, let me make a comment. Okay. I just have to tell you that we are very, very proud of you and Jackson as to how you've taken this thing from, from a narrow personal point of view. And gone ahead and done this book and brought this to a point where it can help a lot of other people. It just makes me proud. That's all I can do. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Here's your special present. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your special
Wow Publishing Group, that's their company yeah. name. So. And people have said, wow, how'd you get that name? Of course, it doesn't take very many people too long to connect the dots. But even my first letter to Jackie started with wow. Yeah. I tell people anything about this. Wow. I designed my own website. Wow. <laughs> legislation to open birth records so that all adoptees will have access to that. And one of the people they're most concerned about are people like Jackie, whose privacy could be violated. Um, I guess we just want, if we are able to help create dialogue and more public um, awareness of this situation, um, we're happy to do it. And Oprah would be an awesome place to do it. So. I'll let you know if we have an Oprah bus going to Chicago wow. anytime soon. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, can't you just see me sitting yes. right on the stage with Jackie and then this picture in the background? Oh, yes. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> or this one. <laughs> but this one's cuter. <laughs> Any others that go ahead? I'd like to know how many years they keep the adoption record so you can go back. You know, happen to know? Do you know, Do you know that? Oh. Should be forever. forever. Yeah. Should be forever. No. That's what I would think. Yeah, we're thinking we have to be honest. Seems like when I'm looking for something, we've always had blood or a fire in the gap. It's been destroyed. But the agency would have records in the state records. A lot of times those records come with a price tag, too. So that's kind of the bad thing for some people. Young adoptees that want information, they can't come up with five to fifteen hundred dollars or whatever, so it doesn't seem fair, but... Yeah. Well, and the other thing, too, that um, has been demonstrated not just with us, but with a lot of people, and many of you are aware of this, you can find anybody you want on the internet nowadays. You know, it might, you have to be a little savvy, you might have to have connections here and there, but um, anyone can be found. So maybe it's time to simply open the records and... Um, get agency involvement if need be so that you know these older adoptees are adoptive parents or I mean um, birth mothers are protected so that's another thing with our story trying to get it broadcast so that uh, because just by nature of the secrecy there's birth mothers out there that nobody even knows some are terrified yeah. Yeah. terrified they have not told a single person mm -hmm. and uh, but that's our generation, because so much of it was secretive back then, it was shameful, it was something that was broadcast. If you stayed home, you were kept in, kept upstairs and until it was time to go to the hospital or whatever. But, you know, thankfully things have changed, and it's not the terrible sin that it used to be. Yep. 
A lot of aunts were visiting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, she went, yeah, she went, oh, to, she went to see her aunt months. for about six months. <laughs> 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 Anything else? Well, I'll just throw this out. In that whole time, or how would you? What word would you put to it? Very much the whole time. Well, the fifty years when you were keeping your secret, mm -hmm. did, were you terrified I, that someone would find out or someone would no, ask? I or? wasn't. I wasn't terrified. I would not have preferred it. But my feeling has always been that if uh, Katie showed up, I would never turn my child away. I couldn't do that. Even knee deep in diapers as I was sometimes. <laughs> Don't look at me when you say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, um, and I don't really, I don't know why I, I kept it. Well, I guess I just, it was just something I did. It was part of my life that I think I had buried a long time ago because that's what we were supposed to do. I did my grieving, I went on with my life, and uh, raising another family, um, that kind of does, that kind of plays in the background of your life. It's always there, but but you're so busy with other things, and, and kids growing up, and going away, and coming back, and going away again, and, <laughs> and it, before I know it, 50 years was over with, and um, it was time to start putting my life in order. Tying up loose ends, um, uh, finishing all my assignments, because you never know. <laughs> you get by a and, this, and this was a big one. This was a big loose end that um, I had to get that one taken care of. Not like the word big. There, I like that better. <laughs> child for adoption is like you have to amputate it's like amputating a limb because it's the only way you can survive it that's a good analogy mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes. And you mentioned that it was uh, the sisters of St. Joseph and um, uh, you know the, the Catholic um, way of life yeah. it was a big part of this mm -hmm. um, was that did that influence um, <laughs> how you handled all of this or do you know of um, what it influenced how the decision I made of course because a lot of it came from from uh, the religion it came from the family mm -hmm. it uh, just came from society and when I went when I finished and went or when I went back to work you know there are always women around talking about their uh, their families and their children, and I can't say, well, I'm a mother too. I couldn't say that. Mm -hmm. I had to keep that inside, and uh, so it just got so it was uh, kind of a habit with me mm -hmm. to to be careful that I that never slipped. Mm -hmm. And habit is what it was. I think more than fear uh, mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? I think so. Good you because you've come forward and it's relatively pain free and you know <laughs> and let, letting go of the secret sets you free too so well, change your whole life it's amazing yeah. because once well and there's something about turning 70 mm -hmm. it's like well they can't do anything to me anymore yeah, and once that, once I, I said it, once I said I'm a birth mother, and uh, people said, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> you got it, too. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it was, uh... It sounds like uh, your friends were the ones who encouraged you to, to start this journey? Uh, you mean the search? Right. Uh, no, they didn't. I don't think I told them until after I'd started, but they're all, you know, all behind me. I've got some sitting here tonight, and they were just, they were behind me every step of the way. Yeah. But it was actually a writing group she was in where, uh, yes. where you crossed paths yes. with Gretchen, right? You no, know, I found Gretchen's letter in the Catholic spirit. Oh, she, she's okay. an adoptee mm -hmm. also, and, and, a, and a, an adoptive mother as well. So no, in the writing group, um, 
we all had assignments, of course, every week to write something, and I came out with that writing and stopped traffic. <laughs> 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 I have a birth mother. Whoa. And that's oh. what we talked about for the rest of it. Yeah, it's at the very beginning of the book. Yeah, mm -hmm. we included that, and it's powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Powerful. And I think there's, you know, there's a lot of young people that have no idea what it was like oh, no. back in the 50s and 60s and, and before that. Mm -hmm. Oh, this, there was nothing worse. There was nothing worse you could do to your family than come home pregnant. Mm -hmm. That was the worst. Now, I want to know what happened to those sons who came home having gotten some. <laughs> no, not a thing. I, just, no. I know. I keep hoping that someone will say, my beard spilled the tire out of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Don? Question? No, not a question. Comment. Okay. Why not in support of men? No, it's always been. Uh, Rather fan, you know, it's always been faithful that the husbands of women who have given their children up, uh, given a child for adoption, oftentimes feel they, I don't know if I want to marry a woman that had a kid and gave it up. Part of it sometimes being too that if the husband is in a some kind of a professional line or as a politician or something, don't want that word getting out. Uh, now, on the other hand, I'd like to praise Bill, who is Jackie's husband, who has been very supportive of her and has encouraged her to seek and find her daughter. So I just want to throw that in for the men. <laughs> I guess I guess I should add something too. I've suffered some of the pain of this whole situation. <laughs> but there are, um, believe it, there are women who are ter who are terrified. I mean, they're my age or older and terrified that their husbands are going to find out. So in divorce now, in divorce, and, 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 and uh, Bill, I uh, have I have to say he's always been behind me. He said, anytime you want to search, I'm behind you. I heard a, a birth mother comedian one time, and she was talking about how you know, the, the mother comes out here, and she really thought it was only fair that the birth father should get a big butt. Anything else? Any other comments or questions? Or? Anything? Just keep up the beautiful relationship. Oh, yeah. And it hasn't been, um, I mean, it's been awesome, but it hasn't been necessarily, you know, perfect. There's been issues that have come up in some of those. Um, well, not so much in the book, but since then. Um, but little things, but we've discovered that if we just make a commitment to this relationship, <coughs> then there isn't anything we can't work out. Um, I will just make this one statement. <laughs> we um, actually even were able to discuss, and that was via email, um, abortion. And we have opposing viewpoints on that, but we... Uh, we're able to work on that, and we'll never speak of this again. <laughs> so, I mean, even something like that that can be a deal breaker for some relationships, differences of opinion. Um, we've been able to work through all those because we know that this relationship we've been able to build is stronger than anything like that. There isn't anything that would break it apart. Another? Are you planning a sequel? Um, probably, at some point. <coughs> But this um, this one is a very powerful short read that people have really been impacted by. But oh yeah, there is a lot of stuff left. <laughs> We're not going to turn into like the Bobsy Twins go to the bar or anything like that. <laughs> Twenty-six book series. Me and Jackie go to the bar. <laughs>
One thing, too. Oh, go ahead, Karen. Well, I was just going to make a uh, comment or a question. Did you guys interact with the legislation at all with your story? Or well, were you sent a copy to the governor? Oh, okay. Yeah, we sent a copy of our book to Governor Pawlenty with a letter just asking them to read it. And, and then we did give some copies to Minnesota Coalition for Adoption Reform. And, I, and yeah. I'll let Gretchen and those people determine where where those copies should go and where they can best be served. Yeah. And I decided this morning that I believe that the President mm. and Mrs. Barack Obama need a copy of our book, too. There you go. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Air Force One has two and three hour flights, too. Yeah. But I just thought, what the heck? What have I got to lose? Yeah. Cost plus postage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Because, Dad, didn't you, what president did you send a book to and you got a letter back from him? One of those fishing books was a Carter? The first book. Yeah. Oh, the first Bush. Bush one. Oh. The writer of the two. The <laughs> 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 one who could read. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Any other questions? Katie, did you want to mention maybe how uh, you're hoping that uh, there's going to be a oh, yeah. on others? Weren't you telling me that there's already been kind of after the care no. show, okay. one person already contacted you? Yeah, okay. yep, we've had several kind of people contact us for information about. Um, just something they thought about and what did you know what input did we have and so it's already creating a little bit of a buzz just among um, adoptees and birth parents both. Hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, I hope so. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll sign books. As long as you keep bringing them up here, we'll keep signing them. Thank <laughs> you. 
What are you doing, sir? Looking at looking at books. Good to see you again. Yeah, how are you? I'm getting by. <laughs> Put that thing down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping so, I'm finding that the whole area here. We're having to save this at the the rest of the area. So I probably be Good to see you again. Walking right into you. Life is good. You know, uh, <laughs> well, you know, at that uh, graduation, didn't you talk a little bit? I don't remember that I did. I usually well, retire to the corner. Didn't didn't you get uh, a video of that? I see. Yes, I, I, I certainly did. Well, I wanted to make sure you got one. Yeah, I want to go, yes. Okay. I appreciate you doing all this. Uh, do you, uh, you want one of this, too? Sure, I want everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Give me, give me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wasn't planning on taking anything of you, but now that you popped no, up. No, you're always very sweet. Oh, I saw the I Don, uh, what are you here for? Crowd control? <laughs> I'm here for advancing the publishing company. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the books, found some books that he thought were really good. Getting a hand cramp? A card. Not yet. Katie has a card. Did I tell you um, the book signing I went to a couple weeks ago? Did I tell you about that? I got to meet Tom Robbins. Oh, oh yeah, you did mention that. That's right. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> He's almost as famous as we are. Yes, almost. Okay. Almost. Now this one is for the mystery reader, Rachel. Um, across the street, Rachel. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. That's for Jennifer. Try and see if you want. Well, no, because I wanted lots of books to read on the plane. Right. Well, this is, these are legal. Yeah, it's a woman lawyer. As opposed to. 
Well, it's set in the legal. Oh, I'm asking that. I don't know why. She's a lawyer. Okay. Did you talk to Van Daly? I'll give you the first one and see if you like it. He's written something, isn't he? She gave me, like, the first one. Oh, is it? I don't know. I'm sure. I thought he said he was. He gave me, like, the first one. And it's actually the author's are. One of my friends. Okay. That's for my name. Oh, this one's for me. For you. For me. Did you read the Folly Girl part? Huh. No, not yet. Here's the whole thing. Folly Girl uh, 2000. Uh -oh. Your picture's in here for crying out loud. Shut it up. Oh, 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 no way. Oh, Can you sign it in the book? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, oh, now we have double signing. Yeah. Oh, wow. No, you write your own book. We're all drunk right there, aren't we? Oh, look at no, this. No, we're not. Oh, oh now stop. Sit. Now stop. <laughs> Sally. Oh, wow. I was downloading. I was making a PowerPoint oh, today, and I saw I, was, I saw Teresa on the... Tracy, will you sign my book? Stop it! <laughs> Look at it. I'm wearing my sign under the like, picture. I'm cool. There's lipstick <laughs> girl. Oh, she's so funny. Oh my gosh. Lipstick oh, was Christy Look at the one taking the picture? No, it's Christy was up north and her she, grandma. Yeah, her oh, grandma okay. had died. Mm. But oh. I felt that she was a piece of it too. She's a huge piece of it, mm. huh? Oh. <laughs> Yes, it was. Once in a lifetime. Yeah, no doubt. So you have your own publishing company now too. No, yes. No, yes. She's coming up in the world. Yeah, I gotta put together a dental book. Yeah, now the next thing I have to do is figure out how to do the accounting for a small business. No. So I thought the same thing. I know. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah, we're incorporated by the state of Maine. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Do you give yep, us sure. discounts <laughs> to people who publish? Me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you publish a book, I'll let you discount it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's actually not something that we've kind of just talked about. The yeah. reason we even did a publishing company was because we needed a federal ID uh -oh. to sell books online. Oh. So we had to have a company oh, and a ID number. But we have talked about would we publish someone else's work? Right. Yeah. Sure. Become bigger and bigger. So I don't know. Yeah. Well, Don Farrell is Don Farrell, and they, she said she would do the illustrations in yeah. the book. And Sweet. Yeah. So that would be cool. Ooh. Yeah. Someday. Oh, that'd be Someday. fun. I haven't heard from her in forever. Yeah, Where is she, she now? She just switched she's jobs. Maple. Oh, did she? Yeah. She's in Maplewood now, isn't she? Yeah, I Maple think so. Wood. I saw her at the MEBT conference. Oh, she's... What yeah. clinic in Maplewood? Oh, I can't remember. I can't oh, remember. goodness, I can't. Yeah, because you were at Keller. Now, did you meet Tom? I met Tom a long time ago once you? at your house. Yeah, yeah. this is Tracy. Cool. This is cool. new brother Tom. Good. 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 Nice Can you meet you? you. Thank you. Didn't you see the striking resemblance? Especially in the hair. Especially in the hair. These are... Yeah. Um, people I taught with at Argosy, that's Karen cool. and Maria and Sri. Hi. Cool. Beverages, everybody good at home? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. Well, well, thanks so was, much for coming. Yeah, that was such a fun. I got to go catch Did you guys Judy do any reading too. or was it just mostly questions and answers? Um, I read, we each read our first communication oh, okay. to each gotcha. other. And then just mm -hmm. opened up for questions okay. and comments. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was very casual, but yeah. they wanted like to know. We'd like to be here. We just we underestimated how long it would take us to get to the uptown yes. bar and grill. <laughs> yeah. And then how long it would take to get out of there? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, I'm glad you had a good time. You guys know the story, and I can yeah. answer your questions anytime. Yeah. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. so you got here for the best part. I still would like to have heard. Yeah. Well, oh, we have actually say I was. We have a copy of it. <laughs> if you'd like a DVD of it, we can yeah. read it. Oh yeah. Sweet. Oh yeah. He'll ask me how many do you want. <laughs> <laughs> how about your friends at Argosy? <laughs> well, except he didn't get a lot of it.